Welcome to part 2 of our series on the future of gaming. Last time the discussion was about virtual reality. Today, we discuss a topic that's been getting a lot of news recently, and lighting gaming forums everywhere on fire. Please enjoy the show. So, how have your classes been? Not too bad, though a subject was brought up in gaming philosophy that started a fight. A fight? In gaming philosophy? Yeah, and here I thought there weren't any fanboys in the university. What was this subject about? Were the current gen consoles actually game consoles? Or were they just PCs that were consoles in name only? I see. Now I understand why that started a fight. The instructor thought it was a good subject, until the yelling started. Why is there so much hate? Console games are made on PCs after all. Well, you do know why fanboys are so easy to enrage, right? Not really, no. Fanboys engage in what's often called mental masturbation. They're very insecure about their opinions, so they group with people who share them. But, when they meet someone who doesn't it deeply offends them, their first reaction is to lash out in rage. Most of the time this takes the form of name calling. They'll also take huge leaps of logic to defend their opinions as if they were the absolute truth. However, more and more frequently they lash out in harmful ways. They'll hack game accounts, commit swattings, and even email death threats. All that because someone doesn't agree with them? Yes, while they're just a minority they are the most vocal. Which gives non-gamers such a low opinion of the gaming community. What about the question, are the current generation consoles just PCs in disguise? Yes and no. If you go by just the hardware, then yes they are PCs. Both use APUs designed by advanced micro devices. APUs? Accelerated processing units. Basically, they are a microprocessor and graphics processor on the same chip. The Jaguar APUs used in both next-gen consoles are custom-designed 8-core chips made for Sony and Microsoft, but, fundamentally they weren't any different from the APUs available for desktop and notebook PCs. Is that all there is? No, there's more, but where the consoles differ from PCs is the one thing that gives PCs their best advantage. Their best advantage? What is that? You can upgrade a PC, but you cannot upgrade a game console, but, that might be about to change, at least for the Xbox One. Recently, there has been some talk about making the Xbox One upgradable. Of course, you can do that with the current model, which suggests future models will be made so components can be swapped out. Like that modular cell phone that Google has been experimenting with? Possibly, a new design of the Xbox One could use plug-in modules that upgrade the processor, RAM, storage, and etc. Of course, Nothing has been made official, but it is possible. The modules could plug into Thunderbolt ports, which can easily carry the bandwidth those system components would need. But that's the Xbox One. What about the PlayStation 4? Sony has suggested nothing of the kind. However, they do plan to soon make it possible to stream PS4 games to a PC. It would work like Remote Play does now between a PS4 and a PSP handheld, or a PC with Steam and a TV connected to a Steam Link or Steam machine. Though, the idea of making game consoles more like PCs makes sense. How? The Xbox One now uses Windows 10. Games developed for it use the UWP, or Universal Windows Program. In theory, you need only make on version of a game or program, and it will work on any device running Windows 10. There are technical challenges and other problems that still need to be addressed. Currently, UWP doesn't seem ready for high-end games yet Microsoft is forging ahead anyway. They're going to try and compete with Steam using a technology that isn't ready for prime time? Good luck with that. PC developers have had a long and checkered history with Microsoft. There is still a lot of distrust. Much in the company has changed since Steve Ballmer left, and they have a lot of bridges to mend before people will start trusting them again. So there has been a lot of anger and fear that this move by Microsoft is an attempt to hijack PC gaming. Steam is too deeply entrenched. Even if Microsoft were to do something to DirectX 12 to force developers to use UWP there is always Vulcan. 
true, and Vulcan was created from AMD's mantle so it is based on a proven and stable technology that rivals DirectX 12, so he will likely adopt Vulcan for the PS4. While they may never make the console upgradable, a move to Vulcan will help make porting games to PC and vice versa much easier for the developers. Using the same graphics API means less development time, and that means lower costs. It's a smart move all around from a business standpoint. So, if this happens with the Xbox One it means the PS4 and Wii U will be the only pure game consoles left. The Xbox One will essentially be no different than say a Steam machine. If it happens that way, the answer is yes. It means, in the near future the Xbox One could run full screen UWP apps like Microsoft Office 365. That would totally freak out the fanboys. It's sad to say this, but Microsoft may have to toss the fanboys under the bus in order to move forward. I like that idea. Well, it's never an easy decision tossing part of your fan base out because they're holding you back. Canonical did this with Ubuntu Linux. All of the hate directed at them from the elitists of the Linux community is over their choices, which in the long run will help Linux move forward. Canonical's dream of having one code base that runs on multiple devices is now becoming reality because they threw the elitists aside. That sounds like Windows 10 and that UWP thing you mentioned earlier. It is similar, but Canonical has been working on it for a lot longer than Microsoft. Ubuntu phones are available now in Africa and parts of Europe and powerful tablets will be out soon. But, we're getting a little off topic. So, does all this mean that PCs have won the console wars? No, this outcome was always destined to happen this way. PCs started becoming popular in the late 80s and early 90s after the IBM clone court case opened the door for manufacturers like Dell and Packard Bell to sell their own Microsoft DOS compatible personal computers. Over time, PC technology began to outpace the now resurrected game console market. When consoles were just switching to 16-bit, PCs were already 32-bit and starting to flirt with accelerated 3D graphics. So, the gap between consoles and PCs grew and just kept growing. Essentially, yes, but in the mid-2000s that gap started to shrink. Slowly but surely consoles it started catching up to PCs. We now live in a very different time, with very different economics. The convergence of PCs and consoles was inevitable. That isn't going to be a popular opinion. The fanboys can rage all they want, but this has always been the direction game consoles would eventually go. Despite what they might choose to believe. The PC gaming market has always been larger. The graphics technology of the past two console generations were directly inherited from PCs. The very first Xbox was a PC under the hood, just like the current generation. Like it or not the era of the game console, as we know them now, is coming to an end. There will be resistance, but this is the direction they were always headed and I think Microsoft knows this. Basically, the economics of our time supports a convergence of consoles and PCs. Is that what you're saying? We're already seeing it with Steam machines and tiny console form factor PCs. What many console gamers don't understand is that PCs are changing too. While there will always be a market for big, expensive enthusiast products, the average PC is shrinking into something that fits in the living room. When I say PCs and consoles are converging, I mean that they are both coming together to become something new. Nintendo is experimenting with something new with Project NX. Sony has PlayStation VR, they're building PlayStation now streaming into TVs, and soon you can stream games from your PS4 to a PC. It's all changing. When you put it that way it sounds like consoles and PCs are going to have a very promising future. Exactly. The professor is really rubbing off on you, sis. Well, he is my uncle after all. Professor, we got an anonymous tip that the executive's organization has put a price on your head. Oh? How much? Enough to attract the attention of some of the world's best assassins. Wouldn't be the first time I've had a target on my back, and it won't be the last. We need you, Professor. If something were to happen to you I don't know how we could ever stop these people. Don't worry. The executive tried to have me bumped off before, and I think I know exactly who they might send after me. Who? They call him the Winter Gamer. 
Him? Professor, this is serious. He's the greatest assassin in the gaming world. Not to worry, I've dealt with him before. If he comes for me I know exactly how to handle him.